Top of the morning everyone, my name is Tiri and I'm back with a brand new video and today's video is about salary negotiations. One of the most critical things that actually determines what you'll be worth in that company for the next two to three years. Not many people actually ever do this. Not many people go into a salary negotiations because one, it's a very scary thing to do. Number two, there's a lot of other things that people are worried about. There's a fear of negotiating for salary and even some of us who are seasoned and having done recruitment for the last 20 years, we still scared of actually negotiating salary. So if you're thinking about negotiating salary and you're scared, don't worry, you're not alone. First thing, there are tools that you can use to find out as much research as possible about what you're trying to negotiate on. First tool is look at your salary survey tools. You've got tools like Glassdoor, fantastic. It gives you even the companies that you're looking at, it gives you a bit of information about that. Next one is Payscale. That's one of those tools that you can have. Uh, LinkedIn. Before you go into the tactics that you can actually use into salary negotiations is identifying somebody that is potentially a mentor or somebody that's in the same industry or in the same space and just talking to them about what they think that role actually pays. And then thirdly, it's about being able to try and practice. But what we're here for is the tactics, the tools, the way and how we do this salary negotiation. Do your homework. Your homework is important. As I mentioned, there's a few tools that you can use. One of the first things that you do is to go to Glassdoor or go to Payscale and go and look for one, how much does the role that you actually are applying to pay usually? Number two, is there information about that role in the company that you're applying to that at least tells you about what that role is actually supposed to pay? Anchor high. We always say anchoring your salary is about being able to say, never ever give a range that is below what you would accept. So if for example, let's say you want to receive 100,000 as a minimum, never go and say, I would look at between 80 and 120,000. Because the problem is, if you're anchoring at that level, they will normally offer you about 85 or 90. So that already means that your negotiation is already on the back foot. By anchoring high, you're always identifying the level that you're saying, at a minimum, this is what I would take. So if, for example, I wouldn't accept whatever they would offer me, if they at least give me 100,000, that's what I'd be happy for. So make sure that when you negotiate salary, that's where you start. Even when you actually put your data into whatever application form that you're filling out, because sometimes they'll ask you what your salary expectations are, anchor at the level that you think is actually reasonably what you would actually accept as a candidate. Number two, articulate your value. One of the worst mistakes that we all make as candidates is we tend to talk about, I want X, but I'm not telling you why I think I'm worthy of that X. Speak about what you already sometimes already around. So you could say, you know, I'm looking for 120,000 because I'm already around that range anyway. So indirectly, it's already telling the person that you are in that particular range. So if they offer you anything below that, you know, you're not gonna accept it. That's the first thing. Secondly, when we're still speaking about articulating your value, you then speak about the value that you brought into your current company. Like for example, one of the things that you can say is, in my previous company, I managed to bring in 30% of our sales. We're talking about 3 million or we're talking about 4 million. And I do think I'm worth of this because I've been able to showcase my value in my current company. Articulating your worth is also very important because if you, if you start speaking about exactly what you brought in, I've brought in X or I've saved the company X and I've done this, I've done that. It allows the people to already see that you're not just an employee, you bring in some unique skills. And sometimes you'll find that you're negotiating and there's two other people that they're already talking to. So if you speak about what you bring into the table, you, you will always stand out as a candidate. Number four, silence is golden. I think this is one of those very powerful things when it comes to even job interviews. Silence, silence, silence. It's okay to sometimes when somebody asks you, what are you looking for? You then say, listen, you know what? Uh, based on my past and some of the roles that I've actually interviewed for, I've obviously shared what the I was looking for at that particular time. And unfortunately the company tried to offer me something that was below. What range are you guys looking at from your company point of view? That's the first thing that you can do. You can pivot by making sure that first they share what that range they're looking at. And within that range, you can also just pack yourself within that particular range. If you feel that, for example, what they're offering is way below that range that you were looking at, it's okay to say, listen, I was actually looking at X and I don't think what you guys are offering would be in line with what I'm currently looking for at the moment. The second thing that you can also do is, as I mentioned, always make sure that you anchor a bit higher so that if they come back, you can say, listen, 
The truth is I was actually looking about 120,000. The minimum I'd ever take will probably be 110,000. And then you just keep quiet. Don't expand, don't explain, don't tell them anything else, just keep quiet. Let them either ask questions or bring in some aspects because if, for example, you're already way above the budget, they'll normally tell you, listen, you're already way above the budget. If you're already within the range, they'll start asking some leading questions to see if you'd actually take one or other things. But it's okay to sometimes just keep quiet and listen to what they're going to say next. Number four, it's the if-then technique. The if-then technique is a very tricky one. It's the one of those things where it's like, if they say they want to do this, if they want to offer you this, then you'd actually like this. If they're looking at, um, let's say maybe offering you a 90,000, but you're looking at about 120,000, at that particular time, depending on where you are mentally, you could say, well, I would actually consider that. However, I think some of the responsibilities that you guys have already put in place would probably have to belong to somebody else or to another responsibility. Because one of the things that people tend to do is they tend to not align the exact responsibilities of the role versus what they're actually trying to pay. So now, because you've been through all those interviews, you're able to then bring the two together to say, listen, I've actually had a chance to listen to you guys talk about this role and the responsibilities. I do know that part of the work that you guys want to deliver is going to require one, two, three, because I've done this before and I've been able to do this and I've been able to deliver this. I do think if you guys are looking at providing this particular range of salary, I do not think, however, that this would be the right responsibilities that we'll do. If, however, this is what you guys are looking at, then this is what I would actually like to have. That will help you in some of those things. One of those could be if there's L tips or shares that actually exist, you could say, yeah, I would definitely be willing to take that. If, for example, you guys will consider looking at an increase in the, in the package from a bonus point of view, or if you do this, I'll take this if this happens, I'll take this if that happens, but be willing to actually negotiate. One of the other things when it comes to this negotiation, it's about understanding that salary negotiations are a two-way street. If you share certain information and the people are not sharing back some of that information, it's okay to do the last principle, which is to walk away. One of the biggest mistakes that people make when it comes to negotiating salary is that you start really pushing very, very hard to a point where you come across as being aggressive because you don't know when to walk away. So if you've shared what your minimum is, what you'd actually take in that particular range, and the people still keep on coming back with 20% less than what you would actually take, it's okay to say, listen, thank you so much for this opportunity. I really appreciate you going through all this interview, but unfortunately, because of what you guys are offering, I don't think we'll actually be able to align but I do like this role. I think it was a fantastic opportunity, but thank you so much for this opportunity. And then you walk away. Because the power of walking away is showing people that you're not desperate for the job. You actually want what you're worth and you're not desperate for that. So that's one of the things that I think is extremely important in your negotiation tactic is to be able to be willing to walk away from a package that you're not happy with. And to all your hiring managers, please don't make salary negotiations a taboo because it is a horrible thing that we're doing. Top of the morning once again, see you in the next video. Until next time, peace.